Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Val Arkush, Chair of the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners. Welcome to our press briefing for Thursday, June the 25th. We are coming to the end of week 16 of the pandemic here in Montgomery County and to the end of week three in the yellow phase. Since our June 24th press release, we have 48 new cases of COVID-19 reported in Montgomery County, which brings us to a total of 8,153. These positive cases are a result of a positive test for the virus, not from the antibody test. One of these cases is from a long-term care facility and 47 are from the community. These positive individuals are from 21 municipalities. We remain at 61 of 62 Montgomery County municipalities, home to individuals with COVID-19. These individuals range in age from one year old to 84 years old. And as always, you can check our county map at macopa.org slash COVID-19 for updated municipal information as well as other information. Today we have 24 females and 24 males. Today I'm happy to confirm that we have had zero uh, and more Montgomery County residents who have lost their life to COVID-19, which leaves us at 790 deaths confirmed positive from COVID-19. In total, we've had 416 females and 374 males uh, lose their life to COVID-19 since the pandemic, pandemic began here in the county. The racial breakdown of those individuals that have died uh, as we have it includes 18 Asian, three Asian Indian, three Asian Korean, 96 African American or black, 301 white, and 369 unknown. In terms of probable deaths today, and just as a reminder, these are uh, individuals who have COVID-19 listed as a cause of death on their death certificate, but for whom we do not have laboratory confirmation. Uh, today we have 90 probable deaths added to our 790 confirmed. That is a total of 880 deaths. Uh, in terms of deaths associated with long-term care facilities, we are at 658 confirmed positive of our 790 total, which uh, has us remaining at 84% of the individuals who've lost their lives from COVID-19 in Montgomery County, uh, being residents of long-term care facilities. In terms of hospital beds, uh, we remain in the high 80s with approximately 20 individuals requiring a ventilator or uh, approximately 20%. So those numbers have been stable for the last couple of days. All is uh, stable at the Montgomery County Correctional Facility. Uh, we have no new individuals that are showing symptoms or have tested positive for COVID-19. Since the president judge issued the initial March 12, 2020 order declaring a judicial emergency, the population in the Montgomery County Correctional Facility has gone from 1,342 to 836 today, a net decrease of 506, which is a 38% decrease. So lots to talk about today in terms of community testing. As you may have heard, federal funding is ending for COVID-19 testing in Montgomery County as of June the 30th. This change has been anticipated and the county has been planning for this transition. Based on resident feedback, the county, beginning July the 6th, will stand up new walk-up testing sites around the county. 
and will continue to operate the existing walk up sites in Norristown and Pottstown. We'll announce the details of where those sites will be located and how to make an appointment next week. I want to emphasize that these county run sites will also be no cost, although insurance will be billed if you have it. They will not require a health care provider's order, and we will test individuals of any age who want or need to be tested. Funding for these sites will be covered by CARE, the CARES Act funding that has been allocated directly to Montgomery County. So operating through June 30th, one is the, the uh, Pottstown Walk-Up Community Site. It's located at our Office of Public Health at 364 King Street in Pottstown Borough. Testing there will be available tomorrow, Friday and Monday and Tuesday uh, of next week from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. weather permitting. To register for an appointment in Pottstown, you can call 610-970-2937 starting at 8.30 in the morning of the day that you'd like to be tested. This site will reopen on July the 6th. The Norristown Walk-Up Community Site is located at the Delaware Valley Community Health Center in Norristown, 1401 DeKalb Street. Testing will be available there tomorrow, Friday, as well as Monday and Tuesday from 11 to 1, weather permitting. To register for an appointment in Norristown, you can call 610-592. 0680 starting at 830 in the morning of the day you would like to be tested. There are Spanish speaking operators available uh, at both Norristown and Pottstown and the, the Norristown site will also reopen on July the 6th. The Montgomery County community drive through site remains open today and all is running smoothly there. We uh, have been open there since April the 16th, and I just want to give a very heartfelt thanks to the Montgomery County Community College, to Whit Payne Township, and all the residents who live near the testing site, to the Whit Payne Township Police Department, the Pennsylvania National Guard, who've been staffing this site as well as our previous site at, in Upper Dublin. Uh, and the many, many uh, county employees and departments that have been assisting with this work. Uh, it has been extraordinary work and we are so grateful for the efforts that everyone has made to make sure that all Montgomery County residents and residents from across our region can be tested. For the dates of April 16th through June the 18th, we've tested 10,785 individuals and received results on 10,622, which represents 98% of the total. 1,331 of these individuals have tested positive. So for 52 days of testing, overall, we're running 13% positive. But for the last 14 days of testing, and this is just in our, test, our county run testing sites, I'm gonna show you some uh, broader countywide data shortly. But for 14, the last 14 days at our county testing sites, we're running a positivity rate of 8%, which is great. It's the first time we've been below 10% at our county testing sites. So you can continue to be tested at the community college tomorrow, as well as Monday or Tuesday. The appointments open at 8 a.m. You can go online at mongopa.org slash COVID-19 and click under the green county testing information button. Or also at 8 a.m., you can call 610-631-3000. So as a reminder, all of our county sites will be closed on Saturday and Sunday. The three sites will be open Monday and Tuesday they will be closed Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then Pottstown and Norristown will reopen on Monday the 6th. There will be additional sites that open on Monday the 6th, and we will share that information with you next week as soon as it is finalized. Now, as a reminder, both CVS and Rite Aid are continuing to offer 
no cost drive through testing at a number of locations in Montgomery County. And those locations have increased quite a bit. So uh, be sure if you need to get tested, particularly in this uh, several day interval where the county sites will be closed, you can go to our moncopa.org slash COVID-19 site and click under the county testing information button, then click on the testing sites map. So county testing information, and then underneath of that, testing sites map. And you can see where all of those locations are. You can click on a location and get information. Just a reminder though, the CVS and Rite Aid sites are, are only uh, testing people that are 18 years of age or older. Couple more announcements. Uh, first, all Montgomery County parks are now open. And for the most part, this has gone smoothly, which I just wanna thank everyone for their cooperation. Uh, particularly everyone who's been carefully complying with physical distancing guidelines and face covering guidelines. We really appreciate that. You can go to moncopa.org slash parks for additional details about which facilities are open at each individual park. And I just wanna emphasize that park users must comply with all physical distancing markers at each park and that while you don't have to have a mask or face covering on while you're enjoying the park with just your household contacts, we are asking you to have a mask or face covering on your person so that you can quickly cover your nose and mouth if you are near others. Taking these steps will help us keep our parks open and safe for anyone who would like to use them. So as you know, we entered the yellow phase on June the 5th, and we will move to the green phase tomorrow, Friday, June the 26th. Our goal remains a responsible reopen. And here is what the green phase means. And this is from the governor's plan that we continue to encourage telework or working from home if possible. Um, and if you're able to do that, we, we would urge you to continue to do that for a while. Businesses with in-person operations must follow the updated business and building safety requirements that the governor's office and the Department of Health, the Pennsylvania Department of Health have published. All businesses that are operating at 50% occupancy in the yellow phase will be able to increase to 75% occupancy. Any child care that isn't already open may open as long as they comply with guidance. Congregate care restrictions do remain in place. So if you have a relative in a long term care facility that you would like to visit, please check with the facility first. Uh, some are working to offer visits outdoors and some other accommodations. So just make sure you check with them. Prison and hospital restrictions are now being determined by individual facilities. So please make sure to check with them before you visit. And schools are subject to the Center for Disease Control and Commonwealth guidance. In terms of social uh, guidelines, we can now gather uh, up to 250 people. Restaurants and bars are open at 50% occupancy. Personal care services, such as hair salons and barbershops, are open at 50% capacity and by appointment only. Indoor recreation, health and wellness facilities, and personal, uh, other personal care services like gyms and spas are open at 50% occupancy with appointments strongly encouraged. And all entertainment, such as casinos, theaters, and shopping malls, and zoos, I wanna give a shout out to Montgomery County's Elmwood Park Zoo. Uh, they have a really, really great reopening plan um, I've reviewed it in detail and it, it's I think very, very safe. So I wanna encourage you to visit them. Uh, they can return to being open and uh, at least at 50% occupancy and for uh, those where it's a, a, appropriate to have appointments. And uh, construction, as I think you probably know, can go back to full capacity with certain requirements. So this is all great news and thanks to all of your hard work. And we just wanna urge you to continue to comply with all of this guidance. 
So how is the county doing and are we ready? Well, we're gonna uh, share with you the graphs that we do routinely share with you. Uh, this is the um, graph that you've now seen every week for the last couple of weeks. It shows you the daily uh, COVID-19 cases, positive cases, and then our running averages by date of test through June the 20th. So the two a red or the red and the pink line, the red line is the total seven day average. The pinker line is the 14 day average. The blue lines are just the cases from the community with the darker blue line being the seven day average and the lighter blue line being the 14 day average. And then the orange and yellow lines are the lines from our long term care facilities with the orange line being the seven day average. So, as you can see, these lines are trending in an excellent direction. Uh, just to give you the actual numbers, in terms of the total seven day average, uh, and these tests, by the way, are through June the 20th. So, this is through date of test of, through June the 20th. Uh, a week ago, our total seven day average was at 31.9. Today, it is 25.4. In terms of the community cases, last week, our community seven day average was 28.4. Today, we are at 20.9. And our long term care facility seven day average a week ago was 3.4. And today is at 4.6. So, um, all of this is good. You know, we do expect a little bit of, you know, up and down in this data. But these are small changes and uh, ones that we are comfortable with. You can also see that dotted black line on this chart is the uh, governor's original metric of being at 50 cases per 100,000 residents. And we are now below that um, in, in our total number of cases. So it's great to see that. The next graph that we're going to share with you is uh, represents the approximate total number of tests conducted on Montgomery County residents per day. That's the orange line. Now, I do wanna just give one caveat on this. We have not cleaned this data to the extent that we clean our daily positive list. So these numbers might not be precisely right, but they're close. And so, just once again, that orange line is the approximate number of tests conducted on Montgomery County residents per day. And you can see the date of testing on there. And then the blue line is the 14 day uh, PCR. So that's a test for the virus positivity rate of the daily PCR tests performed through June 20th. So this is what we, by shorthand, call the positivity rate. And that number today, or as of June 20th, is now down to 4.52%. So this is really great news. Um, unlike our data from our community sites, which are just the, the people tested there, this is a broader representation of our entire county population and tests done, no matter where they were done, on a Montgomery County resident. So uh, we continue to be very encouraged by how this is going. And I hope that with everyone's cooperation, we will keep this positivity rate as low as it is right now. And what that means is that there's a lot less virus in our community than there was weeks ago. And that this is a level that we can live with. You know, if you look at our hospital numbers and, and um, other issues, our ability to do good contact tracing. This is a number of cases that we can live with, but we certainly want to see these numbers as low as possible. So we've now seen a number of states that have reopened four to six weeks ago, and a number of these states have been experiencing their highest number of daily new cases since the pandemic began. One of the clear differences between what is happening in some of these states and what is happening in states like Pennsylvania, whose numbers are much more stable or trending in the downward direction, is the presence of either strong recommendations or orders to wear masks when out in public and when in businesses. 
So I just want to share uh, this map with you with uh, thanks to and permission from the Philadelphia Inquirer. And you can see that the states that um, are in the green, either the darker green or the lighter green colors have some sort of either mandatory or uh, strongly recommended or partial requirements for masks to be worn either in public or in businesses. And you can see that their new case totals in these collection of green states is all going down. To contrast that with the other states, which are much bigger number of states that are in the sort of yellow um, or, or beige colors where uh, there are either very minimal restrictions or requirements in terms of wearing masks or no requirements at all, you can see that there's been a big increase in those states. So we continue to get data that comes in every week from observations like this, mask, this uh, map represents, as well as more scientific studies of the impact of wearing masks. They all come to the same conclusion that wearing masks, when both parties are wearing masks, they help reduce the spread of COVID-19. So please, please do the right thing for yourself, for your family, and for our entire community. And when you're out, when you're in a business, when you're near other people within six feet, please, please cover both your nose and your mouth, because this is not over, folks. Um, green does not mean go back to the old normal. Green means going forward to a new normal, one where we are living as safely as possible with this virus. The risk is not going to be zero until we have a vaccine. And even then, it may not be entirely zero, but it'll be a lot closer to zero than it is today. But there are straightforward and very simple steps that we can each take to reduce the risk to ourselves and our families and to reduce the risk of our community as a whole. We each have to take this as a personal responsibility to help not only our families stay safe, but to help our whole community stay safe so that our businesses can be open and get back on their feet and, that our, and so that our kids can get back to school this fall. So what are those simple steps? Wear a mask, keep physically distant, and wash your hands frequently. Number two, get tested. The more we test, the more we know. Testing is a good thing. Testing is something that you want to do. If you know you need to be tested, you should absolutely get tested. But if you just want to be tested because you, you're worried that you had an exposure, or maybe you wanna visit an elderly relative or a friend or relative that has an underlying medical condition that, that puts them at greater risk of COVID-19. You know, for whatever the reason is, just for your own peace of mind, please get tested. The more people that get tested, the more that we know, and the more we can keep this virus at the lowest possible levels here in our county. And finally, if you do test positive, we just hope and, and, and strongly request that you cooperate with contact tracing. You and your information will be kept confidential, but the more that you can tell us about who you might have come in contact with in the period during which you might have been contagious, that is also a hugely important piece of how we keep this virus under control here in our county. We need to be able to quickly identify any location where we might have a disease outbreak um, and, and make sure that we, we act accordingly and, and act promptly. So please, again, be part of the solution for that. And if you do get called from one of our contact tracers, please do your best to cooperate with what they're asking you. Okay, a couple more announcements. Um, we have two from our friends at the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. Back in April, Montgomery County, along with the Montgomery County Foundation and other local agencies, created the Montgomery County COVID-19 Response Fund 
to help safety net organizations provide food, shelter, and personal protective equipment to those impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. As Commissioner Lawrence reported on Monday, the fund has raised over $750,000 right here in Montgomery County, which is just fantastic. So the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board has been kind enough to assist us in this effort by creating and selling the beautiful t-shirt that you can see right now, our Monco Strong branded t-shirt with all proceeds benefiting the Montgomery County COVID-19 Response Fund. As of last week, the sales of these t-shirts has raised $10,000, which is going to be deposited into the fund this week. Valley Forge Tourism Board designed the shirt and partnered with Montgomery County business DJB Specialties, which creates custom apparel and promotional products <clears throat> and is using CDC guidelines to produce the shirts. So thank you so much to Valley Forge Tourism and DJB Specialties for their support of the Montgomery County COVID-19 Response Fund. And the need is still there, folks. So if you can purchase the t-shirt, uh, that's just another way to contribute to the fund. You can get these t-shirts at www.valleyforge.org slash Montco dash strong dash T dash shirts. So please check it out. And if you can purchase a t-shirt. Now, our friends at the tourism board also have put together a dining out guide. So since we're entering the green phase tomorrow, and we know, we know how anxious people are to get out a little bit more, the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board has published a guide to outdoor dining in Montgomery County to help residents choose uh, where there are safe places to go out to eat. So if you'd like to take a look at that, go to www.valleyforge.org. And after you've bought your t-shirt, you can click on the Montco Explorer tab, Montco Explorer, to find a list of restaurants that are offering dining outside experiences. And all of these um, restaurants are adhering to the CDC guidelines in the green phase. So I really want to encourage you to begin to patronize our local businesses. Uh, so many of our small business owners are just so eager to, to get their doors open and to get back on their feet. Uh, they have really been the heroes in this fight. Our small businesses and our restaurants, they've been hanging in there, uh, some of them, you know, barely. And they need us to come back and patronize their businesses and shop local and do everything we can as we emerge from this pandemic into a, a different kind of normal, but it's going to be our new normal for a while. Uh, let's each do our part to help these businesses get back on their feet. So with that, I will announce that our next virtual press briefing will be on Wednesday, July the 1st at 3 p.m. And at that time, we are um, expect to be able to announce the locations and the process for all of the new county walk-up testing sites that will open on July the 6th. And with that, I will be happy to take questions. This afternoon, we're joined by Todd Shepard from the Delaware Valley Journal and Jim Melwert from KYW News Radio. We will start with Todd. Thank you, Todd. Uh, Commissioner, I apologize. I'm a little off topic today, but uh, yesterday or uh, yes, yesterday late, uh, Philadelphia Mayor Kenny announced that he would direct the Arts Commission there to uh, look at the possibility of taking down the Columbus statue. Uh, and so this has me wondering, are there any statues that you know of that are under county control that might be thought of as controversial? And, um, you know, is the county reviewing those? And what are the lawful methods that a citizen might use to see something like a statute or a, a memorial, uh, you know, have it removed from county property? Mm -hmm. So, um, Todd, I'm actually not aware of any statues that the county owns that, or that are, are under our jurisdiction that would fall into that category. But uh, I will direct my staff to just double check that that is the case. 
And uh, if, if I am incorrect about that, then we will circle back with that information. But for residents uh, that find or are aware of statues or other imagery that are in any of our municipalities, um, for the most part, that is probably under the control of the municipality or potentially a, a private business within that municipality. And so where I would take that first would be to that local municipal government and start there. That would be my advice. Thank you, no follow-ups. Thank you. Next, we'll turn it over to Jim Mellard. Have, or has uh, contact tracing uh, found any cases connected to uh, anyone attending protests or rallies? Yes, good question, Jim. Um, actually, I asked Teresa Harris to check on that just before the briefing, and I don't. Teresa, were you able to get an answer on that? We don't. Um, they probably won't have anything until later this afternoon. Okay. Yeah, we are trying to take a look at that, um, and we will absolutely get that answer for you. Um, whatever it is that they have found. I think the good news is that we have not seen any spike in cases. You know, we have been seeing our day-to-day -day fluctuation, which we've seen throughout this entire pandemic. So uh, if there were any cases that were associated with those activities, um, it appears at least at this point that they are modest in number. You touched on this uh, a couple of times, but but just to kind of ask it directly, what's different now uh, than when the shutdown orders went into effect, and and why is it safer now than two or three months ago to reopen businesses, especially ones that require closer contact? Yeah, that's a really that's a great question, Jim. Well, first of all, we know a lot more today than we knew 16 weeks ago about this virus. Now, we still don't know everything, but we do know a lot more about how it spreads. And I think the two most important things that we know are that number one, the virus can remain in the air for some period of minutes. And we also know that people who don't have symptoms can spread the virus. Those are two really important pieces of information and the two pieces of information that make me now strongly encourage people to wear masks, because we know that if both parties in a conversation are wearing masks, they will definitely decrease transmission of that virus. And I think it's particularly important for the people that may be carrying the virus and be contagious, but have no symptoms at all. Uh, they could be unwittingly spreading the virus, which is why it's important that we all wear masks anytime that we're out in public and uh, you know, separate from our household contacts. So that's, that's sort of the first thing. The second thing is that we are much more prepared. Our hospitals are uh, in much better shape than they were 16 weeks ago. They understand this virus. They have um, a much greater sense of how to treat this virus. Our county EMS and first responders are also much better prepared and stocked now with personal protective equipment and everything that they need to uh, um, help people in an emergency safely. Three, uh, we now have a much more robust contact tracing team in place than we did 16 weeks ago. Um, it was really, we just got slammed in those early days and very quickly with the acceleration of cases it exceeded our capacity to do contact tracing. Now the cases are coming down and we have a bigger team than we did 16 weeks ago. So we are in much better shape to do contract, contact tracing. The other thing that we have now at the county, and this isn't completely done yet, but it's, it's almost done. We are working on processes to integrate all of our data from the health department to public safety and, and others so that we will be able to uh, have a much earlier warning of any disease hotspots or outbreaks anywhere in the county and be able to respond quickly 
and appropriately to provide guidance to say uh, maybe a business that's having an outbreak or an apartment complex, something like that. So we now have those tools in place to respond. So we are just in a completely different place than we were 16 weeks ago. Uh, at this point, we've built a plane and we're flying it. Uh, in those early days, we were literally building the plane as we were trying to fly it. So we're in a much better situation today. Uh, a few more questions. Um, understanding that this is a state level decision, um, do you think Pennsylvania uh, should follow New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey and considering a quarantine of travelers from certain states and what would your recommendation be to residents who travel to those states that are seeing an increase? Yeah. You know, Jim, I haven't really studied that issue because um, I, I know, you know, that that issue is not one that I could make in isolation, but um, I do think it's important that that decision at least be explored I uh, do not know how exactly they're implementing that decision. So I, I would actually have a lot of questions about how they're even doing that. But I do think that that is a, a very legitimate question to explore and to see if something like that would be feasible for us here in the Commonwealth. Uh, we've done such a good job and worked so hard to get these numbers down that it would just be a shame if individuals from other locations uh, contributed to a rise in, in virus here in the Commonwealth. In terms of people from here that might be traveling to those places, you know, I would be very, very cautious in that travel. I would try to stay out of public places as much as possible. Some of these states have clearly not peaked in their, in their virus cases yet. They're going up by large percentages on a daily basis. So I would proceed very, very cautiously if I were to go to one of these states. I would do my best to stay out of the public sphere. If I was there, I would absolutely have a mask on and be very, very uh, meticulous about hand hygiene and not touching my face, you know, just proceed with a lot of caution. And when you come back, um, think about getting tested. You know, we're, we're going to make it very easy and no cost to you to get tested. So if you do travel to a place where there's a lot of virus, um, think about getting tested once you get back, just, just to be safe. A lot of businesses that will reopen with, with the green phase employ people who work for tips and, and don't have sick leave. Uh, is there concern that without a safety net, people would voluntarily stop working for 14 days? What's the message to those employees and to the people who employ them? Yeah, I think that's a very real and legitimate concern. And as I have been saying from the very beginning of this outbreak, I have been asking businesses that do not currently offer any kind of paid sick leave, if there's any way that they can do that to please, please consider doing that. Uh, acknowledging that that may not happen, the county has put into place a number of um, provisions for individuals who need to isolate or quarantine, but may not have the resources to do that without help. So, first of all, we do have no cost hotel rooms available for individuals whose home situation is such that they cannot isolate or quarantine safely in their home. And we also have a number of services that we can offer to individuals uh, if they need help with food or medication or you know, other assistance to get through that quarantine period. We really, for the sake of everyone in our community, need those individuals who must go into isolation or quarantine because they're either positive or have been directly exposed to do that. Now, that is how we will keep this virus under control. And the county is here to help make sure that you can accomplish that. So I, I, it, it is a tough situation, particularly when it means loss of wages. And so again, I just urge businesses, if there is any way possible that they can provide 
pay while people are in isolation or quarantine for COVID-19 that they do so. And last question, and I'm going to use words here that, that may or may not be right, but but I think you'll get the point of the question. Uh, it, it seems to be that there's a, an increase nationally, a, a, a significant increase nationally in the number of cases, but also seems to be a significant decrease. Looking at the New York Times numbers, the 14-day average, 47% increase, but 29% decrease in, in deaths. Can anything be taken from that? Is that a, a trend that, that that shows you something, or is it just numbers? Well, again, as we've talked about from the early days of this pandemic, uh, the deaths associated with COVID-19 are what's called a lagging indicator. And what that means is that the peaks that you see in deaths always come several weeks after someone's been infected or even the peak in infections. And that's because uh, people don't tend to pass away very quickly from this disease. Uh, they often are at home for several days and then are hospitalized when they take a turn for the worse. And then, the, as we've seen in our own data here in the county, uh, sometimes people are hospitalized for a couple of weeks before they succumb to the disease. Now, having said all that, um, I do believe that we've learned a lot about how to treat this disease. And I think that there have been, while there's no cure or specific treatment, there are some treatments that are, have been shown to help. And so our hospitals are employing those treatments and hopefully that will help reduce the overall death rate. But the fact that we're seeing uh, rising cases, but actually decreasing death rates those death rates are really reflecting what was happening, you know, three weeks ago when cases were kind of going down in many, many places. So I hope that we don't see a big spike in deaths, but I would assume that we will see that number, uh, sadly, start to go back up uh, in the next, you know, three to four weeks. Uh, that's it for me. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, anything else, Todd or Teresa? We have no further questions. Okay. Well, thank you, Megan. And thank you everybody for watching today. And we will see you next Wednesday, July the 1st at 3 p.m. Take care and be safe.